guys to come. We post these on our YouTube channel uh, in a few days. I probably uh, early next week we'll get this posted up there. So if you um, think any of your friends or relatives want to learn a little bit about G Adventures, you can direct them right to our our um, YouTube site, uh, which you can connect from our from our website. So. Um, We'll begin. I just want to say thank you very much for signing up tonight, taking the time uh, to join us. And, and um, some of you I know, but uh, those some that maybe don't know me, I'm Rob Blows, and I'm uh, Vice President of Blows Tour Travel, and I'm based in Stratford. And uh, uh, we're running these Wednesday sessions, as I'm sure you obviously know, because you're getting emails to sign up. So uh, thank you very much for uh, your interest and, and uh you know, we hope this is uh, this is of interest, and, and uh, some of our future um, future uh, Wednesday webinars will be uh, of interest as well. And, and uh, you know, the purpose of, of us uh, doing this, you know, we're not obviously selling travel right now. It's not what we're trying to do. We're just trying to um, give you the idea that you know, maybe maybe not the time to travel right now, but it's certainly the time to plan to travel right now. And, and the opportunities are out there. Never seen flexibility like we have now with, with booking conditions. And, and here he's gonna get into that a little bit too. So, um, you know, it's a great time if you're thinking about traveling in the next year or two to so get something on the books, I think, because you're gonna benefit from, there's gonna be this, we, we are anticipating this tsunami of bookings when the vaccines get to the point where we have this herd immunity at least in people's minds, and and um, the the, the uh, travel restrictions are relaxed, and uh, and people feel gets confident, feel safe to go again. So um, you don't want to get caught not being able to go, um, but certainly there's no pressure to walk. But there's certainly some great value to and benefits to booking early. But um, I'm going to just uh, introduce uh, Gary Armstrong then from from G Adventures and. and those of you who heard Gary chatting, he's living in Port Hope, and he's the uh, he represents G Adventures in Eastern Ontario, basically. Is it Eastern Canada yeah. as well, Gary? So now it is, yes. So um, it's the yeah. GTA, uh, Ontario, and yeah, all of everything from the GTA to uh, till you hit water, and then that's to the north as well. Okay, very good, very good. Well, I will uh, I'll pass it on to you because they tuned in to listen to you, not me. <laughs> Great. Cool. Thanks so much for the, for the intro, Rob. Thank you all again for yeah coming in and attending and learning a little bit more about G Adventures. Uh, I guess I really should yeah follow on to what Rob had said about uh, availability right now. And so um, this idea that you know G Adventures were a small group travel company, so we we have departures, but there's limited availability at the best of times on the trips that we are running. And so you're going to see this across this this moment when. Uh, demand starts to outstrip supply. So if you are looking for travel, be it the end of 21 or into 2022, then uh, it's always been book early to avoid disappointments so that you get the dates that you want specifically for um, the most popular destinations at, at the most popular times. But um, absolutely. So what I'd hope to do is give you kind of a quick introduction to G Adventures, talk about uh, some of the safety um, protocols that we put in place and answer really the top five questions that I get most often, um, you know, in my role as, as, as global purpose specialist for, for G. And then really hoping that if you guys have any additional questions, you know, as I'm going through, if you want to know more information, uh, mm -hmm. then be writing that stuff down. You can put it into the chat box and uh, we'll have a bit of a conversation uh, once I've, I've gone through the presentation because the, the best thing with these Zoom meetings is the fact that they can be interactive, right? We're all kind of stuck in our homes. And uh, right now this is as close as I can get to actually, um, yeah, presenting to, 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 to groups of people. So I, I do really enjoy it. And I'm happy to answer any questions that you have. Uh, so first off, I'm going to share my screen and you will all see yourselves momentarily. And then I'll start from the start. Cool, so can everybody see the presentation? Yes. Yes, yep. cool, thank you, great, cool. So hi everybody, I'm Gary. So I'm the Global Purpose Specialist for G Adventures. And uh, what I'd like to do, yeah, is just, I guess, talk about those top five questions. Um, you know, <laughs> the question that we used to get all the time as an adventure travel company is, you know, is it safe to travel to this destination? And, you know, insert destination there. And so, you know, I'm, I'm used to answering this question. And now obviously it's changed a little bit because of the nature of uh, the, 
the, the health crisis that the entire world is going through. So I'll talk about some of the uh, new policies and procedures we put in place to make sure that we're helping to mitigate the, the risk of transmission of COVID-19. Uh, I'll talk about the booking flexibility. Yes, absolutely. Uh, one of the, the silver linings, I guess, to this is the changes in the industry to make it so that it is very flexible when it term, comes down to being able to book now, to travel later, to book well in advance. And if things improve the way we all hope, then you can even bring trips a little bit closer if you've booked them far in advance. Or alternatively, if you're getting close to that departure date, being able to push it further away if for any reason you feel um, uncomfortable with uh, traveling to, to a destination. Uh, talk about the why behind G-Adventures, the reason why we are still so passionate about talking about travel, about focusing on the positive impacts of travel and tourism, and the benefits that this industry can bring to people all over the globe, and also the benefits that it brings to us as individuals when we have the chance to go and experience other cultures. I'll talk about <laughs> adventure travel in general, right? Uh, is it just for young people and backpackers? Uh, the, the, the spoiler alert for that is we have a broad range of different travelers who travel with us. And then I'll talk about a little bit about family travel as well. Um, and so to kick things off, it is really important to talk about safety. We want to ensure that our travelers know that they can travel with confidence with us on our small group trips all over the world. And there's a lot of things that we're doing to ensure that um, that takes place. Of course, we are um, supporting and are part of the, the international guidelines that are being brought out to ensure that we're all working together to mitigate the risk and transmission of, of COVID-19. And it's really a holistic approach, right? This isn't just one thing we're doing. It takes into consideration everything from when you book your trip uh, and the things that we request prior to you know, uh, getting on the plane. We highly recommend that every traveler uh, get a negative PCR test, get tested for COVID-19 prior to travel. Um, just so that, yes, that you have that, even if the, the destination you're traveling to doesn't require it, there are things that we're going to be able to do when you arrive to help set expectations, to talk about the procedures and protocols that are in place in that destination, things that we're doing on tour, and then, of course, the things that we'll be doing prior to you leaving, like helping facilitate uh, you getting your uh, PCR test to then return back to Canada after your trip. And we are really lucky. I mean, as I mentioned, adventure travel, all the time we had that question historically, is it safe to travel to this destination? And for some people, uh, you, know, it, you know, distant destinations can, um, yeah, can, can ha hold that, that fear of the unknown. And ultimately all we're doing, it's an additive process. And our CEOs, our local guides have always been able to help set expectations, help our travelers uh, acclimatize to the destination and really embrace the culture shock and in immerse yourself in that local culture and make the most of the time that you have in that destination. And right now they're spearheading the drive around ensuring that we are um, safe on our trips. So yes, there will be times when you will be uh, wearing masks on G Adventures trips where social distancing isn't possible. Obviously social distancing where it is possible, but uh, you know, regular hand sanitizing, you know, additional cleaning of vehicles, all of these things go on. And it is the uh, opportunity and responsibility of our CEOs to make sure that we're all working together and it's not just about maintaining the safety and security of our travelers. It's also about ensuring that the people in the destination uh, are being protected as well. Because, you know, in, in many of the parts of the world where we operate, the healthcare systems are not as robust as they are in Canada. And so we really need to do our part in terms of preventing uh, and mitigating the risk of transmission, especially in rural and remote communities around the world. And we operate small groups. So there is uh, inherently, intrinsically less risk with a group of five, eight, 12, maximum 16 people than uh, groups that are significantly larger than that. And it also works in our favor because you just get used to this routine of, um, you know, uh, sanitizing your hands when you're getting on and off of vehicles and, uh, you know, putting masks on when you're going into cultural or historic sites where social distancing isn't, isn't possible. And so it really does help the fact that we have that smaller, uh, that smaller group size. We, we use smaller suppliers. So there's a lot of ways that G Adventures was really already set up for success. We're not having to reinvent our business model to meet the challenges and the requirements and the protocols that, that COVID-19 is, is introducing to, to everybody. And so we've always used smaller locations that are uh, centrally located, locally owned, there's no elevator to the 20th floor of the hotel in, in, in the vast majority of G Adventures trips. 
uh, you know, these are smaller locations where you're walking up a couple of flights of stairs to get to your room. And so those lobby areas are also seeing less through traffic purely because it's a, it's a smaller property. And we've never overprescribed the number of meals, the buffet meals or anything like that on G Adventures trips. The focus is on giving you the opportunity to go and explore, um, support local restaurants, uh, speak to the CEO and have the CEO, your local guide, call ahead and book that private room for the group or find space on the patio outside or recommend really great alfresco dining options or street food when you're in a destination. And so, you know, like I said, it's, it's just an additive process and it's layering extra security and extra protocols on top versus having to completely rearrange the way that we operate our tours. And so that's kind of scratching the surface. There are a lot of things that we do to ensure that you guys know that when um, you feel safe to travel, that we will ensure that you, we will be looking after you, all of the travelers on the trip and people in that destination um, with the, the practices and protocols that we're putting in place when we're, we're running our trips. And we're also ensuring that we give you that extra flexibility. So right now, nobody has a crystal ball. We don't know when uh, border restrictions will start to ease. We don't know when caseload numbers will come down to a point where it's, it's really safe to be in different destinations. And so the goal is to ensure that you can book and know that you've got that flexibility. So that if you're looking at travel in late 21 or into 2022 and beyond, that you have that chance to um, cancel and rebook up to 30 days prior to your trip and we've always had lifetime deposits with G Adventures. so it's 350 dollars to hold your space on a future departure 60 days prior to the trip is uh, the date for final payment and any time prior to 60 days that lifetime deposit is non-refundable but it is 100 transferable you can't lose your deposit with G Adventures. it is really really hard to lose your deposit with G the idea is that uh, things change, again, even before this pandemic, um, situations come up where travelers, you know, have been looking forward to that trip for a long time, but for whatever reason, it could be that they're not able to take that trip. And so we have that deposit that's 100% transferable uh, and, and flexible so that you can um, cancel that trip and look at a future departure of the same itinerary or look at a different destination altogether, depending on uh, what you would like to do. And so... Again, just making sure that we are, you know, we, we've always had that flexibility, but we're increasing the flexibility by ensuring that you can cancel and rebook within 30 days uh, for trips within 2021 as well. And so I, I guess the third major question is that question of, of why. Um, you know, during a pandemic and with the, the nature of a lot of the media coverage right now, I mean, um, I am still extremely passionate about talking about why we should be um, looking to travel as soon as it is safe to do so, talking about the benefits of travel and tourism, because this company was, was founded on the idea that travel is a force for good, that just by going on a trip, uh, you can, um, yeah, you, you can help make the world a better place, that uh, the travel industry is a fantastic mechanism for wealth distribution, that the industry takes some of the wealthiest people in the wealthiest countries in the world to visit some of the poorest people in the poorest countries, so why can't more of the money that you invest in travel, why can't that stay in those local destinations and lead to positive outcomes for the people there? Um, this is Bruce. He grew up in Calgary. He founded the company in uh, 19, uh, 1990. And that's always been our, our mandate, this idea that simply by going on vacation, you can have a positive impact, that travel and tourism can save the world, that uh, especially with the current a global health crisis that you know we are all connected together and so uh, to go and travel and see how all the things that we are doing here in Canada at, in terms of yeah wearing masks and sanitizing our hands you know those things are happening all over the world uh, and together we are stronger and we can um, and, and community-based tourism has a really important role to play in ensuring that there is strong economic and social regrowth uh, out of the, the worst impacts of, of this pandemic. There's a lot of ways that we ensure that we're doing this in the background. You know, our travelers, you guys, you want to go and have a great vacation and you want to go and see and learn and do. And it's our responsibility as a tour operator to ensure that there are no unintended negative consequences uh, from our operations in those destinations. You'll see on the vast majority of our trips, a ripple score. It's a little metric out of 100 that shows the 
uh, percentage of in-trip costs that stay in that destination. So how much of the money are you spending with G Adventures? How much of that is staying in the local destination, supporting uh, you know, local restaurants, local transport suppliers, locally owned hotels, and staying in that local economy to make sure that the economic benefits of travel are staying uh, in that destination? Uh, we have our responsible travel policies, as well as our Planetera Foundation, which is the, the non-profit uh, sister company to G Adventures. Uh, animal welfare is extremely important. Um, so just again, ensuring that no part of G Adventures operations can lead to any unintended negative consequences for wildlife. Uh, no animal, uh, sorry, no elephant riding, no tiger temples, no dolphin experiences. Um, no shark baiting and diving uh, on any G Adventures trip, just to ensure that wildlife can have a wild life, that we're helping with conservation, that we're going and seeing uh, wildlife in their natural habitat or in refuges where they, they have that opportunity to potentially to be uh, rehabilitated and, and released back into the wild. We also want to ensure that we're not having any negative social impacts on the remote and rural communities that we uh, work with in destinations all over the world. And often prior to the pandemic, when people talked about over-tourism, uh, it was often Venice and Amsterdam and Iceland and Barcelona, right? Where people were worried about the number of visitors, but it was also having an impact on, on rural and remote communities. So the idea of a vehicle of 30 or 40 people arriving in a village of 30 or 40 people, you know, on a regular basis, it can impact that way of life. And so uh, we have policies and guidelines around ensuring that we're working with indigenous, rural and remote communities in a way that allows them to tell their stories in their way, that this is a cultural exchange, uh, that we get to learn about their way of life and they get to learn about our way of life coming from all over the world to come and visit them. And that uh, we're making sure that we're having a positive impact and there is a constant dialogue with those communities. And finally, uh, making sure that we are, uh, you know, not having any unintended negative consequences in terms of interactions with youth, especially at-risk youth around the world. And so no orphanage visits, no active school visits on any G Adventures trips. There are a lot of different ways where uh, G Adventures through Planetera will work to support um, you know, local communities and educational institutions, um, but making sure that we're working with um, a third party company to put together policies and principles to make sure that we're, we're having that positive impact. And so, you know, Planetera is the guiding force behind a lot of this. Uh, Planetera is a, it's, it's, it's a nonprofit organization that turns travel into impact. They work with local companies, local individuals and communities to help them build self-sustaining businesses that tap into the, the tourist economy. So highly recommend if you want more information on the hundred plus projects that G Adventures and Planetera uh, have, have helped to um, to fund and bring experience and knowledge to uh, allow these different companies and individuals to build businesses uh, that, you know, really give them an opportunity to diversify their income and see the benefits of travel and tourism and, you know, ensure that they're, um, yeah, making the most of the visitors that are visiting their region. Planetera has three main pillars or four main pillars now to empower youth, to preserve culture, to empower women and to protect the environment. And so, yeah, if you want to know more information about those projects, please visit planetera.org and uh, you can learn about, you know, again, just how by going to a destination and, uh, you know, visiting a community and learning about their textiles or their handicrafts, uh, you are able to help support them and help preserve that culture and empower the people in that community. So ultimately, the why, the reason why we are so passionate about talking about travel uh, and uh, hoping to ensure that um, people are also excited when they're able to travel, when we can get on planes and go and visit these parts of the world, that um, you know, we are taking that opportunity. And this pandemic has been a really, you've got to look at the silver linings wherever possible. And the idea that the entire travel industry has had this chance to pause, to look at our impacts and to think about ways where we can travel better in the future uh, and make sure that we are um, putting in place sustainable policies around people, places, uh, the environment, and the economic viability of travel around the world is, is as important now as it ever has been. And so, um, yeah, we are one global community. And, um, you know, the more we work together, the, the better the ability for us to come out of this stronger on the other side. 
And so I've gone through those first uh, three main questions. I want to talk a little bit about who's taking our trips, right? What is adventure travel? Uh, what does it look like to be part of a small group tour? Uh, I've mentioned that we do run small groups. Uh, they tend to be uh, groups of eight, 10, 12, the vast majority of our tours max at 16. And we have a broad appeal to all different demographics. So at G Adventures, we talk a lot about psychographics, the psychology of the travelers, how you wanna see the world versus how old you are when you decide to go and see that country or visit that destination. So, you know, about a third of our travelers are 18 to 30 somethings, millennials. Two thirds are not, and increasingly we have more travelers in their 50s, 60s, 70s, who have sat on that beach, eat all they can eat, drink all they can drunk, and have decided to travel in a slightly different way uh, and, and go with that group of like-minded travelers to have a, a culturally immersive experience in, in a destination. And so because of that, uh, we don't break our trips down to, it, it, by destination. We do it by style of travel. And adventure can mean different things to different people. Often when we think of adventure, um, it's this idea of, uh, you know, sweating up a hill uh, with a backpack or, um, you know, yeah, staying in a in, in accommodation that's very different to the, the accommodation that you'd be staying in at home. Or, or But it really can be, um, you know, trying a different food or having a conversation with somebody who doesn't speak English as a first language or, um, you know, enjoying that cuisine that you've always loved at home, but trying it in the destination that, that you've been to. Uh, and really, I, I might take a pause here and see, um, you know, what, what does adventure mean to you guys? Uh, when, when we say adventure, what, what is an adventure for you? Well, I basically anything that's outside of my normal routine. So if I can get up and go to another country and learn some new things and see some things in person, that's that to me is adventure versus seeing it electronically or in a book or something like that to actually experience what you can otherwise watch in a documentary or watch, uh, you know, read in a book or something like that. Actually executing it to me is the adventure. Yeah, that's a great one. Just breaking the routine. Anybody else, the, their definition of adventure? I tend to agree with what she has said. <laughs> yeah. I, I, we, we talk a lot of time about uh, G Adventures, about helping travelers to push their comfort zone about this much, right? It's about taking that, that little leap and um, that little leap is, is different for different individuals, but ultimately it's, it's the type of small challenges that we accept uh, that can lead to those life-changing moments and those memories that you know, will stick with you um, forever. And I talk a lot about culturally immersive experiences. And if we, you know, when we get to questions, you know, if you wanna ask about individual destinations or you know, I can talk about anecdotes from trips for a long time because although we put a lot of thought into our itineraries and we try and convey what it's like to be on a G Adventures trip when you're um, looking at the day by day, there's just so many things that happen between that day by day. Uh, our trips, we, we, we try and have them, uh, they are structured, but the goal is to ensure that there's free time and that there's flexibility in there. So it's not on the bus, off the bus, on the bus, off the bus, on the bus, off the bus. The idea is that based on the nature of the group, if um, somebody wants to go and do something a little bit different and uh, investigate something, then the, the, there is that opportunity to go and do that uh, individually or as a group, because you're a small group, uh, often it means that we all get to learn a little bit more about that hobby, that pastime, uh, that, that thing that is important to that individual traveler and just, yeah, create space and time for, for unique experiences to happen. And the idea is that um, there's lots of different ways of seeing the world and every single travel style that we have encompasses the whole world. So, um, you know, just as different people want to see and do different things on a trip, uh, we have a lot of different travel styles. And so absolutely, if you're uh, 18 to 30 something and you want a, a, a budget backpacking trip and are okay with share accommodation and um, 
you know, want to have a, a, the, the, the best possible low cost trip and maybe uh, have more free time and flexibility and less inclusions, we have those 18 to 30 something tours. We also have our National Geographic Journeys. So this is upgraded accommodation with G-Adventures. It's a little bit more structure, uh, more inclusions. So you're pulling your wallet out a little bit less on these trips. Often optional activities like cooking classes are just built into the Nat Geo trips. But then we also have access to National Geographic experts in the field. So through our collaboration with them, you know, this image I love, you're in Petra, uh, you're visiting that historic monument, and it is the National Geographic archaeologist who works at Petra, who shows our travelers around that site. And so just different ways we're able to build in additional educational content on those National Geographic Journeys tours as well. We have our active trips. The clue is in the title with a lot of these, right? If you want to do multi-day hiking, biking, kayaking trips, if you want to climb Mount Kilimanjaro, or if you want to do uh, climb uh, Machu Picchu, you know, we have those itineraries in that active travel style. But we also have activities and, and trips that are just spending more time outside. So um, we have a, a, a new range of trips in Europe where you know, you're spending time doing little day hikes. You know, you can go to Corfu or go to Ibiza or go to the Canary Islands. And instead of uh, driving through those destinations in a vehicle to get to the different sites, uh, you're carrying your day bag and you're going for walks through the landscape. And I think with the amount of time that all of us have had to spend indoors over the last uh, 12 plus months, that uh, it is a great opportunity to, to be a bit more active, but not necessarily have to, you know, hike up a mountain. We have our marine itineraries as well for those people who love being on the water. They're small ships, so the vast majority of our ships max at 16. We have a number of yachts around the world and in the Mediterranean that max at eight. And so, um, you know, again, just a little bit different and inherently less risk with a group of eight or 16 uh, versus uh, much larger vessels. And so the opportunity to go sailing in some of the most beautiful destinations and waters around the world with a small group of travelers and to, yeah, to, to, to really get off the beaten path uh, when you're traveling in those destinations. So we have a lot of different styles of travel. Uh, we do have family adventures as well, the chance to travel um, with your family. And, and so this is where working with that travel professional is really key. I mean, I've covered a lot of different information about um, the how, the why, and, and the what of G Adventures and all these different travel styles. Uh, but your, your local travel advisor, your local travel professional is there to help you kind of uh, work through these different styles of travel and, and look at different destinations and figure out what's going to best fit your needs. Uh, and to have those conversations around insurance and around uh, what it looks like to get to destinations. Mm -hmm. And it's always been the case that for many places in the world that you require vaccination, obviously with the current health crisis, there is uh, more of a requirement in more destinations to, um, to meet requirements for entry into different, into different places. And uh, I think now more than ever, again, a, a, you know, a local travel professional is gonna be invaluable. Uh, I joke quite a lot. I don't, I don't cut my own hair, which obviously right now is obvious. Uh, I don't do my own taxes and I don't book my own travel. There is a professional who can help me do that. Um, and it costs the same to book with uh, your local, um, yeah, your local uh, travel consultant as it does to book with G Adventures. And there is a world of, of value that they bring into that conversation, especially, especially right now at, at this moment as well. And we do have the opportunity for you to, uh, for, for younger children and to, for multi generational families to travel together. Um, the age requirements on the vast majority of our trips is 12. So unless it's an 18 to 30 something trip, there's a really good um, uh, likelihood that the minimum age for those departures is 12. The classic trips, the wellness trips, uh, some of our marine voyages are 16 because of the fact that they are smaller ships. And so uh, we just need to have that, that safety for, for children when they're at sea. But we do have our family departures. So the National Geographic Journeys family itineraries, as well as the G Adventures family itineraries, uh, kids as young as seven on the Nat Geos, kids as young as six on the family trips. And if you're doing a private group, if you take pretty much any G Adventures itinerary and you wanna to travel together as a family, uh, maybe as part of your bubble, uh, you know, a term that we're all getting used to now as well. If you have eight people, you can contact uh, your, your travel agent and they can put together a private group and you can select your own dates and, and, and um, yeah, have that culturally immersive trip together and, and see the world. And I know that 
you know, I would love to be able to spend more time with my family. Right now, we are being forced um, to kind of to, to be apart a lot. And so to have that future trip to look, look forward to uh, and to kind of uh, get together again as families, I think is, is just a really good opportunity to, um, yeah, to do something a little bit different when, uh, when we're taking time uh, through vacation or, or when we're traveling to, to really see a different part of the world, engage with the culture, and um, spend time together as a family as well while we're doing it. So that's, I guess, the start of the agenda. I've, I've talked about the five questions I get asked most often, you know, is it safe to travel and, and when will it be safe to travel? Uh, what are we doing to ensure that we're uh, mitigating the risk of transmission of, of, of COVID-19 um, to ensure that, and now I've got to go back and remember my questions, uh, you know, looking at the flexibility to make sure that you're able to book now and travel later and, have the ability to, to bring that trip further forward if there's opportunity to do so, but also to postpone that trip if, um, you know, if, if things don't improve as fast as we would all like. Uh, this idea of the importance of travel, both us as individuals, the chance to, like you said, to break that routine, to create new memories, to try new things. Um, there's a great quote that Bruce, our founder, uses, you know, we're all born explorers. And somehow the industry has turned us into tourists but the idea is we have this innate need and this desire to go and see people in other places and learn about their history and culture and explore and you know right now this privilege of travel has kind of been restricted we're not able to do it right now but once we are able to it, it's really going to give us that chance to see the world and realize that we are it is a very small planet and we are all in this together um talked a little bit about the I guess the demographics and also the psychographics, the different travel styles at G and how we have a, a broad appeal to a lot of different types of traveler and age really is just a number and it, it depends on how you wanna go see the world. And then finally that, yeah, if we wanna to travel together as family, if we wanna to travel together as, 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 as friends, um, then we're able to, to create our own private departures as well. But now it's definitely time for your questions. Um, so thank you so much uh, for, for kind of tuning in for that quick introduction. And um, yeah, if there's any questions, G-Adventures related, travel related, then I'm excited to answer them as well. You could either ask them out loud or you could put them in the chat if you're online. Hmm. Gary, it's Len Lifter. Sorry I was late and um, I came from another meeting. Crystal Cruises has just announced that in order to sail on their ships, you're going to be able to show proof of COVID vaccination. <laughs> I'm wondering if that is going to become the, um, the requisite for future traveling and especially through uh, uh, G travel. I don't think so. I feel that it is gonna be, if a, a destination, if a country puts in place the requirement to arrive in that destination, you need to be vaccinated, then obviously all of our travelers will have to abide by that. Um, that law, but um, the idea that you would, that, that we as a company would mandate that travelers are vaccinated, it's it's not something that we would look to impose certainly in the short term. Um, you know, we have smaller groups. A lot of the activities that take place in a group setting are outside, and we are operating currently. We have a number of trips that are operating right now, and um, you know, we we take safety extremely seriously. And if we're able to operate right now and, and mitigate risk, then uh, you know, we are able to scale that over time and ensure that uh, we're still able to operate safely. So um, the, the types of trips that we run, I think are significantly different to the, the environment that you're in when you're on a cruise ship. And my best guess, as I, I look at my crystal ball, would be that G Adventures would not be mandating the requirement for vaccination, especially when vaccination isn't an option for many people right now. Uh, and if we look at other markets, right, if you're having travelers who live in South Africa and want to travel or live in um, Turkey and want to join a trip with us or live in different destinations and want to join a G trip, then uh, it's, it's, yeah, it, I, I don't know mm -hmm. that the right thing to do is to deny them that chance to, to travel simply because their, their government, their region hasn't been able to roll out a vaccine. Gary, yeah, just, uh, just, just to follow up to that question, um, I understand what you're saying about a lot of the, the trips. Uh, it takes place outside. However, on the bus, there is no isolation. 
Yes, so we wear masks when we're traveling on vehicles. Everybody hand sanitizers getting in and getting out. And we have vehicles. I mean, we've always had a little bit more space on our vehicles. The, the average group size for us is eight or 10. I mean, we do have some full groups, but the majority of the vehicles we use tend to be about 20 passengers. And, you know, we, we obviously do know that that's uh, an area that we have to concentrate on. So if it's possible, we have windows open. If it's not possible, we have the air conditioning on and, uh, and you know, ventilation within the vehicle. And we're making sure, again, we've always made sure that we break up our, our longer drives so that there's time to stretch your legs. And that can also help with um, bringing in additional cleaning regimens. So, so far, you know, everything has been extremely successful. Obviously, this is a flexible policy. And so we will operate and then we'll learn any lessons that we need to learn through operating as well as we go. And everything, again, even prior to this pandemic, safety has always been our number one priority. So although physical distancing is, uh, yeah, a challenge on vehicles, a very effective means of ensuring that we're mitigating the risk of transmission is to make sure that everybody is wearing a mask before they get on and everybody is wearing a mask for the duration of that, that drive and that we're enforcing those rules on our trips. Um, I have a question. Um, with Canada currently, for the foreseeable future, requiring a negative PCR test within 72 hours, are your CEOs at your different destinations going to be able to facilitate that for guests, or will it still be up to individual guests to search, book, prepare for that? Um, we're helping to facilitate uh, for the, the trips. I mean, when the PCR requirement came in, uh, we had a number of travelers in Costa Rica with us. And, and so, yeah, it's just a matter of making sure that we're building in time to, to allow that to happen. And yes, facilitating it because the vast majority of countries now do require a PCR test to come back in. And so everybody in the group needs to get tested and they need to get tested two days prior to travel. And so while we're not able to you know, cover the costs of those PCR tests, we are absolutely working, uh, our CEOs are working uh, in destination with those testing centers to make sure our travelers are able to do it. On certain trips right now, there is the requirement to stay an extra day. I can think of one itinerary in Tanzania uh, when you're hiking uh, Kilimanjaro and, and the, the trip ends on a certain day. And so we need travelers to stay an extra day so that we can get tested when you're back in, in, in Arusha, I think, so that then you can travel. So um, again, this happens prior to departure as well. We're, we're making sure that we're being proactive and absolutely, you know, our, our local teams have always gone above and beyond. And a lot of the feedback that we're seeing right now is exactly around that. You know, uh, my trip had ended. I wanted to stay a couple extra days in the destination and my CEO went above and beyond and made sure that I was able to get to the test center and get tested, even though it was after the end of the trip, they were helping me out. Um, and uh, again, Prior to the pandemic, it's important, right? I mean, technically our duty of care ends at the end of the trip, but our CEOs are real people. They live in the community. They love what they do. And um, they're invested in every single traveler who has experienced that their destination with them. And they have always gone above and beyond. And this is just another opportunity for them to, um, I guess, continue to do that. There's a lot of great people who work at G Adventures, but the best people who work for our organization are, are our local guides, our CEOs. And um, you know, the, the feedback that, that we see is it's again, it's just a, a great way to um, to feel good about the work that this organization does because it, it, we we don't use the term changing lives lightly. It, it really is important. And so absolutely, when it comes to testing in destination, you, you can't really leave the country <laughs> until you get tested. So we're working to make sure that happens. Okay. Excellent. Great. Thanks. Yeah, I've always had great experiences with G Adventures. And, and yeah, you're right. The CEOs are always willing to go above and beyond. Um, but obviously, some destinations are a lot more logistically challenging than others to get that PCR test and to have the exact timing down, yada, yada, yada. So uh, that yeah. is reassuring to know that they will, uh, they will facilitate that. And it's, it's our responsibility as an operator to, to make it easy for our CEOs as well. So we are making tweaks and changes to itineraries. Right now, we're running a very limited number of groups, as you can imagine. And so it, it really is a case-by-case -case basis. And part of being able to uh, restart operations in the destination is ensuring that we can get our travelers back to their home destinations. Um, 
I know in Costa Rica, we flipped one of our itineraries. So it would start in one place and end in another. And we changed it so that we would have time to get tested in a major, uh, well, in, in a larger town. So that then by the time you get to the end of the trip, you can then fly home and your test is ready. Um, but I, that's a question I, I wanted to ask you guys as well. Has, has anybody been on a, a G Adventures trip? And uh, Laurie, where, where did you go with us? Uh, let's see, I've done um, the Galapagos, um, Kenya, uh, two trips to Peru, uh, Morocco, I think five or six, somewhere yeah. around there. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Cool. All have been fantastic experiences. Yeah. And one canceled on the books, right, Rob? Yeah. That's <laughs> I right. Got, I got we'll the get... plug, plug pulled on one I should have been at last, this past year. So we'll get you there. I credit right now. Yep, and with future travel credits, the, I mean, initially when your trip was canceled, future travel credits were good for two years. Um, and yeah, the goal is to ensure that you're able to use those, right? So if we need to extend that flexibility by an extra year, then that's something that's very easy for us to do. Um, but ultimately, again, the goal for us is to give you that opportunity to, to go and, uh, and, and, and have that trip as soon as we're able to do so. Anybody else, any G Adventures trips or, your, or or where would you love to go? What's what's the top of your, um, I guess, your wish list for traveling? Hmm. Transatlantic cruise. Yeah, I'm, I'm from the UK, so I, I get the appeal of, of being on the water and visiting Europe for sure. <laughs> Thank you. And, uh... Uh, we had a comment there, Len, African Safari is on his list. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. And that's where I, I, often when I'm talking about Nat Geo trips, I'll, I'll reference the, the safaris that we have in Southern Africa and Kenya and Tanzania. Uh, when you visit Kruger National Park, we, we have members of the Big Cat Conservation uh, Center who will give a lecture to our travelers and then ride with them in those uh, safari vehicles. And I always say, I mean, if you've got questions about uh, the impacts of poaching or climate change or tourism on wildlife, asking the people who are literally counting those animals is a great place to get that information. And it, it, it kind of highlights um, that collaboration that we have with Nat Geo. And we have our classic tours. We have 18 to 30 something tours through that region as well. Um, it's, it's a beautiful destination, uh, one that I haven't had the chance to visit, but my colleague Erin, she spent our honeymoon in South Africa, I guess, yeah, at the end of 2019. Uh, and did one of our itineraries there with a, a husband and just yeah loved it as well great are there any questions comments um top destinations anything else i can answer while uh, i'm here and and uh, i have you all all right well actually i ha i have one and that's just maybe to explore a little bit better the um i've generally done the active or the classic ones or originally when i first took my first one with g adventures you still you had a category called comfort um yep. because my husband wasn't really interested in traveling classic it was the only way to get him to go and uh since you've you've sort of built that into a slightly different structure um but the one uh style that i've been interested in but have not yet taken is the local living and i imagine it's not for everybody um but i just i don't know i i i guess yeah not exactly sure what my question is it's just that i know that it's not for everybody <laughs> and um so, lo like local example, living what i'm looking at is the mongolia one yeah Cool. So local living is split right down the middle between the cushy ones and the more rustic ones. Yeah. And so uh, the cushy ones would be our local living in Sorrento, in Amalfi, and in Croatia, where you're staying in agriturismos. It's farm to table, uh, <laughs> dining. You, you, you're staying with that family and kind of unpacking once in these beautiful properties and going and exploring the local towns with your CEOs. So uh, often when I talk about local living, that's uh, what, what people are interested in knowing more about. The other side is uh, the local living in Ecuador, as well as the local living in Mongolia. And so in Ecuador, you're with Delphine and his family. It was the, one of the first trips that Bruce ever put together with G Adventures to go and explore 
yeah, very far off the beaten path in the jungles, the Amazon jungles of Ecuador and, and uh, meet with, you know, Delphine and his family and, and learn about their way of life um, in, 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 the, in, in the rainforest. And then the Mongolia trip as well was, it's, it's really high up on the top of my list when I first started at GE as well. This idea of traveling to Mongolia, of uh, riding horses, of making yak cheese, of, um, you know, learning about building a yurt and staying in a yurt. I would say that the two things with Mongolia that I get the most frequent comments for are, um, we have a Nat Geo in Mongolia as well. Historically we did, I think we still have it. Um, but a yurt is a yurt is a yurt. So you're staying in a yurt. And, um, and so it's, yeah, it, it, it's still, a, it's that experience, right, of, of, of being there. The other thing is it can be difficult if you're a vegan or a vegetarian, because the vast majority of the diet in um, that part of the world is, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's meat and it's fats and, uh, and dairy and, and that kind of stuff. And so uh, although we do a very good job of ensuring that we're meeting people's dietary requirements, Mongolia specifically is one of those destinations where we really have to work that bit harder and the amount of choice is going to be a little bit more limited. Um, but as for the experience, um, yeah, I mean, it's definitely off the beaten path. It's a unique cultural destination. And I always contact, whenever I see it pop up that people are looking at Mongolia, I'll, I'll tend to, to, to call the travel professional and, and ask more questions and see if I can provide more help because, um, it's again, it's, it's a destination where travel and tourism can be an additional source of revenue. So they're not as reliant on uh, subsistence farming and, um, and, and, and yeah, other forms of income. And so it can be of real benefit to the people in that destination. And, you know, the more people that we have going there, then it, it also helps with that, that cultural interaction as well, where we can learn about you know, what is pretty much the definition of the middle of nowhere, you know, out of Mongolia. Um, but people are people everywhere, right? And um, it's just, it's really fascinating to, to learn about different ways of life and how people are able to, to really survive and thrive in, in these different destinations. So um, as far as the accommodation, you're going to be in, in local yurts, but we do move you around, like you go to different places and you're staying with local families and you're, you know, eating a meal with them. Um, but it's, yeah, it's, I, I don't know, I could, I, I hope that is kind of answered your question. Um, I don't know that I have any, on the, the, the site, we might have some images. Uh, most of the images that I've seen are of the landscape because, you know, how much time are you spending in your yurt, right? Um, the idea is to get out there and, and explore and, and it really is the, the vistas and the, the animals and the people that we're there to, to see. But there's the cushy ones as well. So you can do a trade with your husband. Like, okay, one time we'll go here and go to Mongolia. If you come to Mongolia with me, then we'll go. Oh, I've left them behind Mongolia. lots of times. <laughs> and uh, that's a good point. I mean, we do have a lot of solo travelers who travel with us. There is no single supplement at G Adventures. I mean, right now we have my own room uh, often is, especially with, we have a certain group of trips, um, 40 trips that are part of the Travel with Confidence Plus collection. And those, for those itineraries, we reduce the group size to 12 and we subsidize the cost of my own room. Um, right now with the promotions that we're running for future travel, often my own room will be, uh, you know, 15% off or, or promoted as well. So that if you want to go by yourself and you want to have your own room, then we're making it more cost effective to do so. Pre-pandemic, and I think even now the vast majority of travelers, you know, we're, we're all in the same boat. And so the idea is that um, we're not forcing people to, purchase that single supplement. If you're happy to room with another solo traveler of the same gender, then we're able to do that as well. But obviously, you know, right now that's going to be, uh, it, it really is dependent on our health and safety protocols, you know, what that looks like. Um, I just want, I want to make one more comment, actually. It was somebody had, had chatted room about the uh, African safari. And I just want to make one comment about the uh, I've been to Africa three times now, and I've got another trip coming up for South Africa this September. Well, hopefully anyway. Um, of all the trips and all the destinations I have taken, uh, I like to do lots of research and I have a fairly good expectation of, you know, what sort of experience you're going to, to have and what you're going to come home with um, and that sort of stuff. The one 
destination that I can say to that has always exceeded my expectations in just it's it's just not the same as watching a documentary it is not the same as reading a book is my trips to Africa you know South Africa and Kenya um I mean Morocco's in Africa as well but just sort of in terms of safaris um you just it is so different than to experience it in person that it is to to watch it um my husband before i convinced him to go the first time uh well i can go to african lion safari if i want to see the animals why do i want to sit on a plane for 18 hours right um and even he and my son whom we took the first time just is like okay mom now i understand now i get it it is not the same and an african safari to me is one of those experiences that it's truly to experience it is, is the only way to do it anyway that would that would be my my response or, or uh um contribution to the question about the african safari is it yeah. is truly an amazing experience would agree that's why you're going back Lori. Mm -hmm. it, it, it changes you. I've been three times myself planning the fourth. It, yeah. it actually changes your whole yeah. perspective on things. It's, it's, yeah. it's, it's it is, I, I can't explain it, but you just I, want to go back. Yeah. And as corny as it sounds, if you love nature and you love people, it is borderline on being a almost philosophical experience. Like it's, I mean, it sounds kind of corny, but when you do it, you know what I mean, yeah. um, because it's just it's just awe and like it's just awesome. It it just yeah and you can't you can't experience other the, put it any the, other way. The travel industry has become critical to conservation as well. I mean, conservation and education is at the heart of one of the the reasons and one of the benefits of of the travel industry and and, mm -hmm. and what it provides to communities and and us as individuals. And so, yeah, absolutely. So there's a big difference between seeing an animal. Uh, in captivity versus seeing one in the wild. Mm -hmm. and, and by going and seeing that animal in the wild, you are helping to, um, you know, pay, pay to prevent poaching and uh, help with education and uh, provide alternative revenue for those communities that live outside of those national parks so that they're not being forced to hunt bush meat for food and uh, log and those kinds of things because they have that that different type of, of, uh, of, of, of means of, of generating a, a, you know, a life for their families. And, um, you know, there was, just, we have a, a, a relationship and a, a partnership with Jane Goodall and her institution. And, um, you know, somebody who's spent her entire life, you know, convincing, um, you know, people and communities on everywhere in the world that you don't have to cut down those trees, you don't have to kill those animals. You know, there are people around the world who will pay to come and see that that environment. And it's, it is a really important part. And right now, uh, a lot of places are are struggling with the the, the massive loss in revenue from uh, not having people come and visit. Well, not just revenue, the actual being the lodge that I um, am returning to in South Africa, I had been to before, and they said that they personally in their greater Kruger and Berluli, um, they have seen the increase in poaching. Um, and it has nothing to do with revenue. It has to do with the fact that there's not as many tourists coming through. The poachers have clearer access, less likely to run yeah. into somebody else. And poaching has actually gone up during the uh, the pandemic because mm -hmm. it's just the absence of people opens the yeah. floodgates. And it's quite, quite sad to, to know that. Yeah. Uh, so I want to answer that question from Kim as well about the different levels of travel. So at G Adventures, we, we don't really talk about luxury because that is in and of itself usually like a, a different standard. National Geographic is as close as we come. It's, it's, you know, the wellness tours are also a very high standard of accommodation. Mm -hmm. uh, the National Geographic African itineraries, we use some really great lodges. And um, I, I talk a lot about the value of the Nat Geo Africa trips because I used to work with an agency in Calgary that they specialized in African safaris mm -hmm. and would say that, you know, unless you're looking for luxury, unless you're, um, you know, spending, because you can spend a lot of money to go to that part of the world, um, it, it's fantastic value for the, they're not inexpensive trips, but, uh, yeah, you stay in some really great accommodation. And so they would, they would recommend us all the time for that destination. 
I've never met a National Geographic hotel that I didn't like. Uh, I took our trips in Thailand and Vietnam. Um, the, even the trip in, in, uh, in Bolivia, the hotels that we use are, are, are of a very high standard. So I'd say that if you're um, you know, looking for a, a higher level of comfort, then the Nat Geo journeys would be the, the mm -hmm. ideal travel style. And we don't sacrifice, you know, using local operators. We make sure that, um, you know, the the ripple score on those trips is just as high. Uh, you're also supporting Planetera by going on a G Adventures trip, and you're supporting the National Geographic uh, Foundation as part of the proceeds go to National Geographic as well. So um, there's a lot of reasons to be to be looking at those Nat Geo trips. The 18 to 30 something trips, you know, that is where we we care less about the accommodation, and it's more about the um, you know, the freedom and flexibility and also the cost to make sure that we're cost competitive for those uh, more budget conscious travelers. Our classic travel style is right in the middle. So classic trips, uh, clean, comfortable, centrally located, locally owned hotels, uh, not hostels, it's not share accommodation. And then a balance between free time, uh, being cost competitive, but and also ensuring we have guided activities on those trips so that you can make the most of the, the time in the destination. And classic is the vast majority of what we do. And, um, you know, you can, yeah, you, we, we can go in and we can, you can see the different hotels that you're using um, through those trips. So, uh, yeah, you, you, you're going to know that you're still staying in comfortable accommodation. Gary, we did the uh, Morocco uh, Ge National Geographic trip in 19. And just to confirm what you just said, the accommodations were great. That's fantastic. Yeah. And it's the goal is also to keep it in, in, in keeping with the style of the destination, right? So the hope is that, you know, we use local suppliers. And so it's uh, it kind of the accommodation can really be part of that cultural immersion. And I know that I had a, um, a, a traveler who'd let me know that they'd. <laughs> It was, it, it was an agent and one of the people on their group that they'd taken, uh, there was a scorpion or something. It was in Morocco, was, was in there. Maybe it wasn't a scorpion, but something, a creepy crawly was in their room. And the CEO was like, well, we're in the desert. <laughs> you know, this is where we are. Um, you know, we can do so much. But the idea was that, uh, that it's, it's that balance, right? We're not going to, um, you know, sacrifice the cultural immersion for the accommodation. But often we're able to find this really great middle ground where it's clean, it's comfortable, it's beautiful. Um, and it, it, it definitely meets your expectations and your needs, but it's still immersive. And we're not giving up the fact that we, we put you in the desert because, you know, you want to see the desert, right? And you don't just want to drive into the desert and drive out of the desert. It's like, let's stay in the desert. Um, so we really try and build that into our trips as well. I think that that's, that's a very good point that, you know, you, you want to keep in keeping with your destination, right? Uh, in all the trips I've taken, I, I wouldn't say that maybe with the exception of a hotel in Quito that we stayed at, which was very modern. Um, everything else has been um, um, nothing uber luxurious by any means, but they've always been clean, well run. Um, but I'll, I'll agree with the comment about Morocco. I mean, to stay in the Riyads and that sort of stuff there is just, I mean, it's just an, an incredible experience, right? It's such a unique accommodation um, that, enhances the trip i think if you were all to stay in the hilton and the marriott you wouldn't come away from the destination having that experience um but as you said with finding critters in your rooms and that sort of stuff i think it it's very important i think for travelers to research their destination um i remember when i was in the amazon for the first time the people checking in beside our group was complaining that it was so hot and humid and no air conditioning well anyone who had read anything about the lodge would know there was no electricity. How how can you show up to the middle of the Amazon expecting air conditioning? Like you have to know your destination. You have to know what to expect. Uh, likewise in, in Lima, I mean, a lot of the hotels, it's pretty standard. I mean, it gets cool, but they're not heated, you know? So go prepared. You're not always gonna have either heating and you're not gonna have air conditioning because that's the authentic experience. Yeah. It's just not what hotels there generally do. And that's where, you know, again, your travel advisor can help with, with helping to answer those questions prior to and setting expectations so that, um, that, you know, yeah, we can, you know, bring an extra blanket or, and again, our CEOs are great for that. You know, you wake up and there's no hot water. It's like, well, okay, hey, talk to the CEO. They'll talk to the hotel. If there's no hot water in the whole city, then there's nothing we can do. But if somebody just needs to flick a switch in the hotel, then they can make that happen. Or if you need an extra blanket or whatever it happens to be. And for the Hilton Hotel in Quito, uh, for our Galapagos trips, 
We specifically use that hotel. I, I did check into this because I, I traveled there. It is locally owned. It's a franchise. So it's a local, um, uh, the, it, it's, it's a locally owned and operated Hilton. The breakfast is at 4 a.m. to get us onto the plane to fly into the islands in the morning. And so we didn't want to give up uh, a really, what is quite a good breakfast in that Hilton. And the location, you can walk out of that hotel. And I went with my brother and, and uh, my wife and they'd read all this crazy stuff on the internet about people getting kidnapped in Quito. And of course, it's fine. And we walked out of the hotel and there's a beautiful park right next to it. And there's all these uh, local art vendors were there, painters. And uh, my wife had left her camera on the bench, the park bench. We'd gotten up and we walked off and we're going and looking at these paintings. And um, a few minutes later, there was a little tap on the shoulder. It's like, oh, is that, is that your camera? Did you leave that on the park bench? And, you know, I, 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 I lost my camera in London. Like, I mean, this in, in the UK, right? It's, it's safety is, um, yeah, we were, we were very happy to get it back. And it's just this idea that expectations can, can be different to, to the reality sometimes. And um, I, I think just because of the, the area, the fact it's locally owned and the fact that we get breakfast at 4 a.m. Is, is why we were able to use that Hilton. That's great, Gary. Thank you uh, very much. We've been about an hour, so I don't want to keep everybody all night, but uh, uh, I hope everybody learned something about G if they hadn't been on G Adventures or those that have, I, um, you know, picked up some more information that'll be helpful booking their next adventure. Um, but we're certainly, our offices uh, these days, of course, we're, we're all operating remotely, but our, our phone numbers and emails will get you connected to your travel advisor. So you can certainly give us a call or send us an email and we'll get back to you as quickly as we possibly can. And um, uh, I wanted to thank you all for taking the time to join us tonight. Appreciate it. And uh, Gary, I appreciate your time as well. And, and uh, we will do this again and I'm sure in the not too distant future. Well, cool. that's great. Thank you, everybody, for your participation, your questions, uh, the, the stories, and for yeah, spending some time with me to learn a little bit more about uh, G Adventures. Yeah, great chatting with everyone. Thanks for joining us. Okay. Have a good night. Have a good night.